All right. So let's pick up with key concept 5.2, which is all about imperialism and nation state formation. So because you need markets for your products and you need materials for your products, um, European countries pretty much start going everywhere and setting up colonies. Um, there's different methods that Europe would use to go take over colonies. They would either sign treaties with different groups. They would use the fact that they were technologically advanced to go conquer other people. And you did have some groups that welcomed in Europeans because they saw that as a form of protection. And so you have lots of different people who had different reactions to imperialism. There's different types of imperialism like you have the political one which was for government but then you also have economic imperialism so you don't have to totally go take over an area but it's you're trying to dominate them economically which is what britain did with china during the opium war um like i said this ultimately is going to lead to china's decline i mentioned in the last podcast about the treaty of nanjing which were the unequal treaties that pretty much forced China to open its door to foreigners, which is something that they really didn't want to have happen. Um, lots of different places are practicing imperialism. It's not just Europe who's taking over, primarily like Africa, Southeast Asia. You also have the United States who gets involved and then later Japan. All right, so looking over here at this little part, when we get to talking about nationalism, you have the formation of new countries during this point that, like I said, ultimately going to lead some of them to become imperialistic, but then you also have the creation of new nations. Uh, America at this point is new, didn't exist until this time period, using Manifest Destiny to expand. Russia starts expanding, which gets them involved in the Crimean War with the Ottoman Empire. They're trying to take over Ottoman land. But ultimately, they are stopped by a coalition of European nations. Again, you have the Meiji Restoration in Japan. They're trying to expand economically and politically. You get, like I said, this whole concept of nationalism which is intense pride and love for your home country and you see this in places like Germany where they unify you also see this in Italy where there are all these different um, you know like city states that end up unifying to create one country because we speak the same language <coughs> we have the same traditions the same customs Um, the Ottoman Empire starts to break apart. Like you get Egypt, like I mentioned earlier, that declares independence. You get the Balkans. So all of these different areas being created, all these new countries are all the result of nationalism. Also during this time period that plays into imperialism, you get these ideas of racial policies that are promoting imperialism and that are the the justification for Europeans doing what they're doing. You have social Darwinism. Basically, we're better than you because of science. There's the white man's burden. So we're doing these things because we care about you and it's our duty as good Europeans, you know, to come and help everybody out, which necessarily wasn't the case. Like I said, don't forget Congress of Vienna, which kind of reset the balance of power after the French Revolution. And I'll talk about the revolutions on the next slide, but stuff that deals with nationalism. And then don't forget the Crimean War. Okay, so like I said, um, different empires at this point. So, you know, like I said, us, apart from the British, realize that the Germans have colonies. <coughs> They're... Um, big ruler at this time is Otto von Bismarck, 
who's the guy that unified Germany. He oversaw the Congress of Vienna. You have the U.S. gaining territory under Manifest Destiny. Like I said, you have Japan coming and taking over. And then under Catherine, you have Russia expanding. All of these different empires are going to try to fix problems that they have. Um, the Ottomans are going to institute the Tanzimat reforms. It was meant to unite all the different ethnic groups together. This was the Ottomans' form of nationalism because, remember, you have all these different groups. If you look at the map up here, you have all these different groups that are part of the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> They're introducing new laws. They're um, creating a national flag, a national anthem. So this is all very nationalistic. They're getting rid of the tax for being a different religion. So they're trying to better educate and better train people. Ultimately, it doesn't work out. And so this is, again, going to keep contributing to Ottoman decline. <coughs> China has what's called their self-strengthening movement. This is where they try to go and fix the military. They still think that they're better than everybody else, but they're going to bring in people from the West to try to help them modernize and help them strengthen their military. Not a whole lot's going to happen. It's not going to modernize China. And ultimately, you know, China's going to keep being conquered by all these Western countries. And China uh, does also have the Taiping Rebellion, which is where you had... Um, Jesus' brother, his Chinese brother, tried to get rid of all other religions but um, <coughs> Christianity out of China. They're like, all these other religions are making China weak. And so ultimately their goal is to get rid of the Manchus because they're ineffective and corrupt and they've allowed all these bad things to happen to China. So remember the Taiping Rebellion. You also have groups of people who had their own countries who are going to resist foreign rule for a while. You have the Cherokee Nation in the United States. So they're this autonomous tribal government that's, like I said, existing within the United States. So they're there. Hawaii was its own government for a while until the United States... Uh, overthrew the queen um, because they wanted to grow sugar there. So but Hawaii was there for a while. And then you had the Zulu who were ruled by Shaka Zulu in the late, like mid to late 1800s. Eventually they lost wars with the British and then were kind of incorporated into British South Africa. Okay. I'm going to have to do this in three, and we're going to hit the last two key concepts on the third podcast.